Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. This is episode 103. I hope you all enjoyed last week's episode with Jen. That was such a fun one to record and definitely one I think people will be coming back to when it comes to fear and intuition and getting out of fear and into your inner guidance. So I hope you enjoyed that. This week, I actually didn't think I was going to record an episode and it's really interesting how the episode came to me. I am at my parents' house right now and I didn't record an episode yesterday. (laughs) I just, I didn't really have any inspiration of what to record. So I didn't. And then I went to sleep last night. Well, I got into bed at seven, which has been happening a lot since it's been getting so dark in the evening. So early, I just kind of get into bed early and I read till like eight 30 because I'm reading this fun book that's kind of like a Jack Reacher style book. It's a Jack Noble series books. And It's just like a consumable, you just like binge read it book. So I was reading that for like an hour and a half. And then I went to bed and slept straight until 5 a.m. Then I woke up at 5 and I was like, oh, cool. Like I'm up nice and early. I'm ready to get on the day. I'm going to record my podcast first. And then I'm like, oh, I have nothing to say. I don't know what to record. I don't have really anything that feels inspiring. And as you know, I only share with you all when I feel inspired and when I feel an inspiring idea come through. And I didn't have that. And I'm like, darn. Okay, well, I'll do a meditation before I get up. So I put my headphones on and I'm at my parents' house in the guest room. So I was like, I just stayed in the bed to do my meditation. And lo and behold, apparently my body needed more sleep because I just iced back out and went right back to sleep, which was funny because I thought I was awake, right? And like ready to get up at five. So I fell right back asleep and woke up around a little after seven, very confused, very, it was just one of those deep, deep early morning sleeps. But the cool thing was when I woke up then, as you might know that when you first wake up, like the, the first half hour after waking up is very much, I think our brain is still kind of in, the, yeah, it's in theta brain waves. So delta is when we're asleep and then theta often happens like when we're just waking up or if you get into a really deep meditation, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. And that first half an hour when you wake up, your brain is still kind of in theta brain waves. It's why people recommend you do morning pages, right? Where you just do stream of consciousness writing or journaling, like letting things flow out. It's why it's not recommended to immediately jump onto your phone and start looking at Instagram or emails or replying to people because that's like an energy suck and it's like conscious mind energy. And it takes you away from yourself. And it's not a great use of that first half an hour of your day when you might have inspiration, clarity, insights, reflections to like jam yourself full of other people's mind stuff is really just not supportive for you and certainly not supportive for your theta brainwaves. So it's such a beautiful time where you're not fully like your conscious mind isn't fully online it's a beautiful time to receive. So I often wake up and just lay there and see what comes through from my inner voice in the mornings. And I often get a lot of messages. I get really great words (laughs) that if I'm wise, I take my phone or a notebook and write down what comes through because it's, it's, it's inspired, insightful content usually. So this morning I actually had an Instagram post today. I'm not sure if I fully remember what came through with that, but that was the first thing that came through was like a quote. And then I thought, oh, this is my podcast for the week. This is what we're going to talk about this week on the podcast. So it was really cool that I felt like I had nothing at 5am and I wasn't really planning to record. And then at seven, the idea was there for me. So 
here we are at nine recording the episode that came through. So really simple. I'm not, I'm going to try not to spend too much time on this one because it's a pretty simple message, but the reason it felt important to share today is I'm seeing this with myself and I'm really, really, really seeing this with my clients right now. So you may know that I have a three month coaching, one-to-one coaching program called the insight coaching experience. And this is modeled off of my own experience when I decided to just let my inner voice start guiding me. The sloth experiment is what it was called. I have lots of podcast episodes about that. And this, it's a merging of energy work, breath work, mind-based coaching, subconscious reprogramming, and most importantly, inner voice. And it's really a different way to approach coaching (laughs) is by taking people out of the mind where all the problems lie and into the inner voice where there are no problems. And the inner voice sees things very, very differently, right? Your inner voice is connected to something beyond you, right? It's God within you. It's your connection to source. It's connected to your intuition. It's not necessarily your intuition, but it is just this omnipresent part of you that you always have access to. Okay. It's yours. And you also always have access to the mind, but we live in this world where we we're on the station, which is all mind all the time. And so in the work that I do one-to-one with my clients is we start bringing the inner voice online And we start shifting the focus in our coaching sessions. Like we build up to it where our coaching sessions, we end up splitting or even doing more time where the inner voice we're interviewing and talking directly to the inner voice instead of the mind. And it's the most beautiful experience. It's the most magical work through that. A lot of clearing happens, right? A lot of people end up realizing that, oh, I've been operating in this problem mode and what happens if that's not real? And what happens if I let go of this, right? It's real to the mind, right? It's real in your 3D world. I'm just saying the inner voice doesn't live in the 3D world, right? It lives in the present moment and it's multidimensional. So it doesn't experience things the same way the mind is. So I'm not dismissing the mind by saying that, but what happens is when you hear and feel and sense this other perspective of your inner voice, it starts to shake up what you think is true and real for you. And it's a really powerful way to start to rapidly shift and release and start to operate from a different perspective, the perspective of your inner voice. But what is required to really do that is, well, a lot of trust, (laughs) a lot of release. So emotional clearing happens a lot. So beanbag, we call them emotional beanbags, but it's like any old trapped emotions that are living in your system that either were unable or unsafe to process in your past, those, you know, energetically live in your body. And so part of the work we do is it's a lot of clearing, a lot of moving of energy, a lot of witnessing and sitting with those old emotions and letting them be transmuted back to light, back to you through presence and awareness and breath. So powerful. And what's required for all of this to really transpire is space. Space. Something that a lot of us don't feel we have or we have access to and our minds have been conditioned to kind of both crave and fear space. But what I'm seeing more and more, and I'm seeing it in my clients, right? I'm seeing it in the people I'm working with. I see it in myself, is that if we don't allow for spaciousness in our days and in our lives, it is very hard to release to process the old trapped emotions, which are ultimately what are holding you back from getting everything you want, right? It's like these old trapped emotions block you in ways from receiving your and listening and trusting your inner voice. They're fears and things that don't feel safe, 
they're just holding and their baggage within our systems. But if we don't have space to process, to feel, to explore, to feel down, right? To let the body start to do its work, then it's really hard to continue to move forward in this new way because trust is required and you build trust by experiencing, right? Positive, well-received experiences through this new approach. A lot of the people who come to me are coming to me because they're kind of feeling done with the way they've been doing things, right? They're sick of pushing, 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 pushing toward the next goal, the next goal, the next goal, always with a moving target. They're sick of being overscheduled. They're sick of not having any space. They're sick of being afraid to take time for themselves, right? To prioritize their energy. And yet they, you know, they've done mindset coaching, right? They're comfortable with mind coaching and they can coach themselves out of being annoyed by their work, (laughs) right? Or their schedule or their partners or whatever, but it's not ultimately making that bigger shift, right? Because mindset coaching only gets you so far because the mind is so limited. We do know that like our conscious mind accounts for about 5% of our daily actions, our choices, our willpower. And the 95% is subconscious. And what lives in the subconscious are these old trapped emotions. (laughs) And then your inner voice can kind of just kind of come beyond both of those and help guide you toward what is necessary. So mindset coaching is limited. The mind is limited. And it's valuable, right? It has its, it serves a purpose and it will get you to a certain point. But when you're feeling that like, okay, now what? That's when I step in and I'm like, yes, please come with me. (laughs) Let's take a different approach. Let's look through a different lens. Let's step more into that, the softening, right? The mind is really rigid and linear and really black and white, right and wrong. Like what's next, what's next, what's next. And then your inner voice is more fluid right? It's softer. It's more attuned and adaptive. And it's really guiding you toward what's the next best step. The mind wants to know the how and like, how is this going to happen? I need to know exactly. And the inner voice is saying, we'll just trust and listen. And each next step will be presented to you. But the mind is very hesitant to follow just the next best step because it needs to know where it's going. And the inner voice says, we'll trust that we're taking you to the exact right place that's right for you. And you can imagine, as you hear me talking about this, like the mind has a lot of frustration around this. And that's a lot of the work that we do, I do with my my clients is like, how do we start trusting in the inner voice? Like, what does that feel like? What is that experience like? One of my clients recently said, she's like, yeah, I feel like I'm just jumping off a cliff. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, yes. And it may have been a different client who said, the mind feels like I'm jumping off a cliff, but the inner voice feels like I'm flying. And right there, there's perspective for you. You're making a leap either way. The mind feels like it's a free fall. The inner voice is like, this is how we learn to fly. What? What? And for each person, each individual, this looks different, right? For some people, it's really small steps, like bit by bit, bit by bit. And for other people, it's like, well, it's just diving in. And your inner voice, not me and not even your mind, but your inner voice is what is ultimately dictating the pace at which you're moving as you're shifting from living on the all mind all the time station and moving toward the inner voice station that is that more intuitively guided way of being. It's so powerful. It's hard to really, truly speak to the power of this as I'm seeing it in my clients. And one thing that actually happened for two different people this week was they received guidance of something that they truly wanted. They were basically like handed what they truly wanted. 
and have the mind has wanted for a while. And it was so exciting. And then in the same time, something that they had, that they had wanted and they had was suddenly in conflict with the new thing that they wanted. So suddenly they had two things at the same time that they wanted and they were in conflict with one another. And that's so painful for the mind. And with both people, what we ended up doing was checking with the inner voice and saying, inner voice, what are you trying to show us? Like we thought that if we had both these things, we'd be happy. So why are they in conflict? Why are you presenting these at the same time? Why does it feel like they are in conflict? Are they in conflict? Inner voice, how do you see this? Does it have to be the way the mind sees it? What is your perspective on this? Does the mind need to do anything about this right now? Does this decision need to be hard in her voice? And so we ask all these questions and both people found that the inner voice was just showing them something bigger by and more expansive than the mind could have predicted, planned for, or imagined. And with that, both of them are possibly stepping into this like big new step that they both thought was going to happen sometime far in the in the future. Like it was something that they ultimately wanted, but they didn't think it was possible now or that it was even what they desired now. But they're choosing, right? You always have a choice. They're choosing to then follow the inner voice guidance and step into it now and let go of some things and, you know, take on other things and this complete new way of being is showing up and it's like, wow, it's so hard for the mind to understand that. And I'm of course not sharing any of the specifics, but it was interesting to me to see the parallels of that in two totally separate people, totally different experiences happening. And that's really the power of what's possible when you allow this. But if you don't have any space, if your schedule is booked from head to toe, Right. If you're constantly letting the mind plan every single thing, if the gripping and griping mind is like holding on to so much fear that you can't even fathom letting go of the smallest thing, what happens is you get really trapped in the constraints of the mind, in the rules of the mind, and in the box of the 3D world. And it becomes a little more challenging to receive the inner guidance or to trust what you receive and certainly to act on what you trust because there's no space and there's no space to feel what's coming up, right? Like how often do you like have feelings start to bubble up and you're like, nope, don't have time for this. Nope. Don't want to feel this. Nope. This isn't valid. No, this is ridiculous. I shouldn't feel this way. I just need to be happy that's not what we do in insight coaching. This is about creating space and it could just be a little bit of space, right? We're like starting to open your schedule up, starting to live more in flow with your natural energy, right? A schedule and a life without space is like, I'm going to pre-plan everything. My mind's going to decide. And then I'm expected to feel a certain way at a certain time for the certain thing. Like, if I plan that on Friday I have to write content, well, what happens on Friday if I feel completely uninspired? Well, if I'm following the mind's plan, then I still have to write the content. And so the content you can imagine will be pretty uninspired, but I'm checking a box because the mind needs that. But what if I knew that within the week I wanted to create this certain content? And what if I let when the inspiration hit, what if that was the time that the content got created? Right. So it's little shifts like that that start to open you up to this idea of, okay, then what if it wasn't all black and white rules? What if I gave myself a little elbow room, a little wiggle room? What if I didn't plan myself so densely packed that I didn't have space to adapt and to shift? Like, what if? When my energy dipped, I didn't judge it and I allowed it to dip. What if those energy dips when I needed a little bit more rest, right? Or where I needed a break. What if that was exactly what my body needed 
so that the inspiration could bubble up and come through. That's what space gives us. In fact, I listened, my friend Kimi sent me this great podcast episode from Glennon Doyle. I'll link it in the show notes where her sister kind of talked about this idea that, was it space? I think she was talking about like having more space in her schedule. The mind thinks that that's a waste of time, right? If I have space, then like I'm wasting time. I'm not using my time well. But she related it to like a fire. And if we all have this fire of desire and creativity within us, we do. It's your prana, (laughs) your life force. It's like sacral chakra energy. If we all have this within us, but if we're so busy and packed all the time, it's like sucking all the oxygen from the fire. So it's just like slow, like it's just this, these embers. But what builds fire is oxygen. I think (laughs) I'm no chemistry major, (laughs) but what builds fire is oxygen. So If you create space, all of a sudden more air and oxygen can flow to the fire, which ignites it and lights it up and grows the fire. And it's from that expanded fire that the desire and creativity come from. And I really liked the way she talked about that because that's, you know, the approach that I have is we all need more space in our lives, like space to contemplate. And when I say space, it's like going on a walk without listening to a podcast or a book. (laughs) I'm serious. Like, or laying in bed. Like one of my favorite things is when I get into bed often, I just lay there. No reading, no meditation, no phone. I just lay there and feel into my body. I have a whole actually meditation that I recorded called the tingles meditation to help you with that. But I just lay there and just feel. And sometimes thoughts come up and go. Sometimes I get ideas. Sometimes it's processing the day, but it's just like 10 minutes of just feeling. And I often fall asleep when I do that. (laughs) Okay. Or, you know, just having, when you get tired during the day, if you can step away, lie down, close your eyes for 20 minutes. I know it doesn't feel like you have 20 minutes, but what if you did? What if that 20 minutes of closing your eyes was exactly what regenerated you instead of pushing through, pushing through, pushing through? Notice your own energy levels. We do not have to operate on the masculine energy scale, right? Which is like a 24 hour cycle where you have the same amount of energy every day, especially even as a, you know, it doesn't matter, but like, especially as women, we operate on a 28 day cycle. So literally, women, Ladies, as you're cycling, okay, (laughs) like as your hormones shift during the month, guess what happens? Your energy changes. We have a lot more energy and power during ovulation time. When you're bleeding, (laughs) when you're menstruating, guess what? That's an inward time. There's a lot less outward energy. Why? Because your body is shedding a layer. (laughs) It's actually shedding a lot from the previous month. Like this is very natural. Like we, and so it doesn't matter if you even are menstruating, but as every human, we can even look to the moon cycles, right? And we can also just notice our internal natural rhythms. Maybe some weeks you do have the same energy every single day. You know, maybe you can work from nine to five with the same sustained energy. But what if you don't have that? What if you just start checking in and being like, where does my energy naturally dip during the day? And what happens if I pause? So I've noticed this for myself is that, and this might take some time. Like we are, when I first left my full-time job, and especially when I started getting into this work, I was like, have I always been this tired and down? (laughs) What's wrong with me? That's what I thought. But what I actually realized was that it was really just the pendulum swinging. It was so far swung to the one side of like, I should always be happy. I should always feel good. And I should always have energy that like, it was false energy that I was operating on. I wasn't letting myself experience the tiredness. I wasn't letting myself experiencing my full range of emotions. And so what happened is when I lifted the parameters around that and I was like, okay, rules are gone. I swung almost completely to the other direction where I felt like I had no energy. 
and that my emotions were completely unstable because my body needs to find its natural rhythm. Okay. So it had to swing one way and then it kind of goes back and forth, back and forth until it settles into its own rhythm, which we're all still always looking for and allowing that to show up. And it was like alarming to me when I first started doing this work. And I, you know, I work through this with my clients is I was like, well, why would I do this work? Because it feels like I'm just like all over the place. I'm tired. I don't want to be around people. All of that happens. And it's not because anything's wrong. It's that your poor system has been held and trapped in the like, you have to be this way all the time for so long that it needs to just like have the space to completely go the other way and like feel everything, (laughs) be alone if you need to, right? Like less stimulation, all of that, so that your body can kind of start to recalibrate on its own. But yeah, it's hard for that to happen when you have a really packed schedule, a really packed life, and everything is planned from the mind. And I'm not saying that your life will look like my life, right? Like your inner voice is guiding you toward what is the best and highest for you and those around you. Okay. So my life, I don't have kids. (laughs) I don't have a nine to five job. I have a lot more space in my life to completely retreat. That's what the sloth experiment was about. And, you know, for other people and other clients, they might have kids, right? And jobs like full-time jobs or their own jobs, but we start to notice like the difference between the rules that your mind places upon you in your life and then like your actual have-tos. And the craziest part with this is you start to notice that fewer and fewer in things in your life are actually like must happen, need to, or else everything falls apart. The mind will lead you to believe that almost everything is a must. But as you start to explore, as you create space to witness and look and be like, well, what happens if I drop this thing? What happens if I don't control this? What happens if I release this from my life? You start to see that you naturally allow more space. Now the mind will want to fill it. The mind always wants to fill space. The inner voice wants to hold space and allow for it. And the inner voice, more importantly, the reason space is so important in our lives is that if we don't have space in our lives, how can we receive what we're desiring, right? If you're like, well, I want this, this, and this, but this is what my schedule looks like. Well, how are you supposed to receive that? I remember I heard someone talking about this in relationship to like being in a relationship that wasn't serving you like a partnership. And it's like, well, these are the things I want in a partner, but maybe my current partner does that. Maybe not. (laughs) And it's like, well, okay. What happens for a lot of people is when they release their partner, that's not serving them or they're not serving each other. That makes space for a divine partner to come in. But what do we do instead? We're like, oh my God, I got to find someone. I got to go get out there and find someone, find someone, find someone, fill my schedule, fill my schedule, fill my schedule. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, you have this desire for something, but there's no space for it to come into your life. So space creates space for the divine right thing to be filled. And the divine right thing shows up through following what your inner voice is guiding you toward. That's what's so interesting about space. That's why, so I moved into my clawfist, by the way. One thing that became clear to me with my business, I was like, I I have this desire to bring on more clients, right? So I was keeping it around three clients this year. And for next year, I want to have, I feel called to have four, five, maybe six clients. And what I realized was I was operating, I didn't have space for those clients. I didn't have space in my schedule. I didn't have space in my home and I didn't have energetic space. So I can want and try to manifest (laughs) those clients all I want, but 
if I'm not creating space in my life for them, where are they going to fit in? I don't want to squeeze them in. I want to have a spacious, beautiful time with my clients, be able to communicate with them on Voxer, be able to have sessions that work within my schedule with them and be so present and hold space for them, right? (laughs) To receive. So one of the things that became clear is like, I need my own office space, which is what inspired the Clawfist project because I didn't have anywhere in my home that was just for me and my clients. And now I do. It's not complete yet, but my desk is in there. The office is empty and my desk lives there. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. And when I put the desk in there, it was last weekend and I had my chair and I like made my desk look, it's such a cute desk. And I blessed the space. I used cedar to clear it and then eucalyptus to welcome it. And then this frequency spray and abundance frequency spray. And I sat there and I sprayed it and I just blessed it and thanked it for being there to hold the growth that is coming for my business and to invite new clients and new streams of income and new breakthroughs for myself and my clients and that this new space can expand to hold all of it. And guess what? It was weird. I live in a condo, right? It's like we have two bedrooms, two bathrooms, okay? Living room, kitchen, laundry room. So I needed to get really creative to have my own space, but it was worth it. It was, you know, it's been complicated. (laughs) I turned our master closet into an office for me. Now it's a beautiful closet, has a window, (laughs) and now it's going to be a beautiful office. But I had to like rearrange everything. John had to be on board, right? I turned our laundry room inside out, (laughs) took everything out, moved all of the stuff from our closet into the laundry room, then had to refigure, okay, how is is my laundry room also going to hold storage? And it was like whack-a-mole a little bit, but that needed to happen. I just knew that needed to happen. And my inner voice, it's funny, like up until last weekend, it wasn't done. And everything was a mess, frankly, because my laundry room was all emptied out. My clothes were half in my closet, half in the laundry. Like it was just a mess. And my inner voice was like, Dana, enough. It is time for you to have your clothes, get it done. And that was not last week, the week before. So that's when I ordered my desk and my chair finally. And then those came last Friday. And that was like my inspiration. I like had the burst of energy, right? I would think that like, oh my God, this is so much work. No, last weekend, I had all the energy I needed to get the coffee done. So I put the desk together. I put the chair together. I pulled all the clothing out of the closet, Okay. Then John stepped up and offered to help me. We moved all of the dressers and everything out of the closet into the laundry room. And then I put everything back in the laundry room, (laughs) all of the storage stuff, like, and everything fit. It was all perfect. And then I put the desk in the office, right? And like, it took a ton of energy and I had the exact amount I needed to get that done because it was divinely guided. I didn't say at Thursday at two, from two to four, I will put things back in the laundry room. No, because that was the mind dictating. And I know that sounds crazy. I lived with a mess in my house for like a month and a half. But when it was time, I was told it was time and I was given the resources and energy I needed to get it done. That's how amazing this work can be. That's what it can look like. If the mind lets go of the rules of the control, not all of it, but some of it, Look what can unfold. If you allow yourself to sit in the messiness of the unknown, right? To process, to sit in the spaciousness of letting these uncomfortable emotions be felt and seen and heard and released. To let yourself say no to people and things. To tune in and ask your inner voice before you ask your mind. And to start to slow down even just a little bit 
So you're more present to the nuances of life, to the subtleties, to the little nudges, coincidences, and miracles that are happening all around you. Choosing to allow space into your life is like choosing to allow your life to completely transform. And it can start with the smallest thing. It can start with not setting your alarm. It can start with taking a nap. It can start with choosing. I've had to make some choices recently for my own energy of like, I always get on Voxer because I love it and I get so excited to talk to my clients, but I get on like right in the first thing in the morning. But guess what? Then it takes away from my deep work time. And then I'm like in competition. I don't have space to like be present with them or to do my deep work. And so what's happened is I'm playing with it, trying to find like the right flow is like, what if I don't get on until noon and then I'll have my other work done and then I can get on and be with my clients and play with them in Voxer and talk to their inner voices. Like that's possible. I have to choose to the mind wants to get on in Voxer. It's like a dopamine hit. It's fun. (laughs) It feels important, but it also takes away from other things when I'm trying to do it all the time. So I'm like, oh, well, actually a boundary around here for myself is going to create more space. It's going to create more space for them. And it's also going to create more space for me, more presence on both ends. So there's all these little places like, do you wake up and you know, use your phone first thing in the morning. Some days it might feel great, but if you know you have that 30 minutes of like theta brainwaves, like what else could you do with that extra 30 minute space in your morning? You know, there's all these fun little things. Maybe it's, yeah, going on the walk and not listening to a podcast. Maybe it's space for you means to stop consuming for a little bit, like stop consuming everyone else's content and start consuming your own content, your own inner wisdom. What if you start tuning in and listening to yourself every day for a half an hour instead of the book on tape or the podcast or the training that you're in, right? Or the new online course or, 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 or. That's radical in this world, like, or the news, right? Like, what if you create space to be with and listen to yourself? I know you have the space in there. But the mind thinks it's so important to fill it with all these things. I need to learn more. I need to do more. I need to put more out. I need to bring more in. I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to. And the inner voice is like, but what if you didn't? (laughs) Exhale, right? Space. So simple, yet such a loaded topic for the mind. And I understand that. I get into that as well. And it's just a practice. But if you truly want something different in your life, if you truly want a different experience to feel differently, we have to be willing to allow yourself to sit in the discomfort of the nothingness, the void right? The void is everything and nothing at the same time. Infinite possibilities live in the void. But if we panic and fill the void up, then you'll never get to tap into those infinite possibilities. If you panic every time you sense the void, because that's uncomfortable, you'll always then live with the discomfort of that comes with being and living from the mind. But if you can sit with the void, if you can sit in that discomfort, that's when magic truly starts to unfold. Oh, thank you so much for listening as always. And I am calling in (laughs) three new clients, three more clients rather for January, January, February, March for the insight coaching program. So I have some clients who have renewed. I have another new client and the number I got from my inner voice is three. So it's very limited (laughs) because of the depth 
and breadth of work that we do together. It is a deep dive. And so if you're feeling called or the nudge, please reach out to me. I'd love to just chat with you to see if it's a good fit because trust me, I'm not going to use my energy on anyone. That's not a right fit. I'm not here to convince you to join. In fact, everyone who's come to me has just known that this is what they want. And so we just get on a call to clarify some things and then we start to work together. I think one of my favorite things about working with my clients is curating my special little gifts for them, getting to speak to each of their unique and magical inner voices, and just seeing what's shifting with them at both the micro and macro levels of life as they start to tune into this and trust, right? And it just starts with the first three months of exploring. And usually people renew (laughs) because there is a depth that it's hard to come by in other coaching spaces. I'll just say that I offer something very unique, which is space that I'm creating and holding for you to be in your own stuff, right? To feel like when was the last time you had a meltdown and someone was just there holding that space for you (sighs) and then guiding you back to your inner voice and just letting that completely clear out of you so that you could feel the stillness and truth of knowing from within. And that's possible. Like when, when we work together, that's what we do. (laughs) I hold that space for you. I hold it for you in our 90 minute sessions, which is like, what? You don't get that in the coaching world. 90 minutes is just a lot, but it's also a lot for you to just be with yourself. And that's each week. And then we have this integration week. So it's three weeks on of our 90 minute sessions and Voxer support. And then there's one week off where it's integration, where it's you getting Voxer support from your inner voice (laughs) versus me. And so you get to put the rubber to the road and see how powerful you are and release and clear and move through whatever comes up. And I have, of course, a bunch of resources and meditations to help you with that. But it's such a transformative experience. Like you'll look back and be like, who am I? And part of the space that I hold for you is space to see yourself shift, right? We don't always notice the subtle shifts that happen because the mind's always, even with this, the mind's like, well, I want to be better at this. I want to be more relaxed. I'm going to, I'm going to try harder to be more relaxed. That's what the mind wants to do, but that's not what it is. It's the leaning back. It's the allowing. It's the witnessing. It's the softening of the edges, the smoothing of the transitions and the shifts. And then I'm here to help you witness that and see and honor what's shifting within you because it starts inside and it's really hard to explain or even for other people to see, you know, and for yourself, it almost might look like you're just falling apart at first and unraveling. And you are, that's the whole point or deconditioning. You're shifting from being a all mind all the time being to being a being, experiencing the magic of life and tuning into the guidance from your inner voice, from source, from all that is. It is so much more expansive, so much more divine in timing and experience than the mind could ever create or control on its own. And that's the magic. Oh man, so fucking cool. (laughs) So anyway, that was what I was called to share today. And if you're interested, I have an application that I'll link in. If you just want to learn more about the one-to-one, you can also book a call with me. I'll put that link in there and I'm onboarding people for January. So if you feel the nudge, if you feel tingles, if you feel like a pull in your gut, Do you feel any guidance within that's like, ooh, I'm curious? Let's just jump on a call. There's never any pressure or or control from my mind for you. I'm just holding the space for the divine next three people who are ready to really completely transform who they are and the level from which they operate. 
and expand into that space. So I would love to connect with you. And thank you always for listening, for tuning in, for sharing this episode, for the reviews I've gotten on iTunes. Like it all is just so magical, both for me and just knowing that you're tuned in to yourself as you're present with this. So, so honored and grateful to be a part of this community. And until next week, as always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans, or find me on my website at alignful.com.